An unusual story leading the news tonight. The Access Hollywood tape is back because the FBI is probing it. All of this putting pressure on Michael Cohen. And that pressure could be getting to him. I'll show you an AP report that says Cohen's afraid he'll be the fall guy for Donald Trump. That's quite a, quite a phrase. And Cohen's not alone in thinking that there may be legal exposure. I have something new for you that we're reporting right now for the first time. The lawyer who was his predecessor, who spent 15 years as the exclusive litigator for Donald Trump, his personal attorney agrees. We just caught up with Jay Goldberg. He did this until 2005. Cohen, of course, came in in 2006. And he represented Trump in some of the most personal and important cases to him, real estate, his own divorce matters. And I asked him about Michael Cohen. He believes that Mueller's deputy, Andrew Weissman, is pursuing a bank fraud case here. And what they did here is, uh, is probably uh, Weissman uh, thought that uh, the money that uh, Cohn had was secured from a bank through a loan in which he represented that he was using it for a different purpose. Now, that would be bank fraud. That's how it's the darling of the prosecutor's nursery. Do you, th do you think there's a case against Michael Cohen for bank fraud? <clears throat> well, I haven't seen uh, the proof, but I think that the statute is so all-inclusive that anybody uh, who takes money from a bank, claiming that they're going to use it for purpose A, and they, in fact, use it for purpose B, is a candidate for prosecution. Michael Cohen, a candidate for prosecution, the statement from the man who was his predecessor. That's uh, something else entirely. I want to bring in two former federal prosecutors, Renato Mariotti and Seth Waxman, as well as Hank Shankoff. He's a New York political strategist. He knows Cohen and Trump and did business consulting for Trump many years ago. Uh, Hank has a lot of what we call juice. Uh, so I'm going to go to you in a second. But on the bank fraud question, Renato, that's Jay Goldberg, Donald Trump's personal attorney, talking about the man who effectively replaced him. And he said, and I'm going to read it to you, quote, that would be bank fraud. Your reaction? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I prosecuted many bank fraud cases, and he's right that if you make a false statement to a bank about why you want to obtain money, that uh, is uh, that that looks a lot like bank fraud. What you also have to have, of course, is the intent to defraud the bank. You can't just—it's not just by mistake you you check the wrong thing on the form or you you write the sure. wrong th thing, but it's you actually have to want to you want to mislead the bank. And I will tell you, w that was the first thing that came to mind when I saw the reports. Um, I I think the Washington Post reported yesterday, Ari, that bank fraud was one of the crimes that was sought in the uh, in the search warrant. And what it suggested to me is, you know, uh, garden variety bank fraud is where you attempt to obtain a loan for an Im for a purpose that's different than uh, you you stated to the bank. So you say, for example, to the bank, I want the I'm doing some home improvements. I need a home improvement loan, and instead the money's going to a former porn star, for example. For example, uh, Seth, <laughs> let me play a little more from Jay Goldberg because it's it's really rare. Uh, to hear someone who held the job Michael Cohen did. And Donald Trump keeps the loyalists pretty close. Uh, but he also, um, in his own way, in a careful, I would say, lawyerly way, uh, alluded to the reputation of Michael Cohen in, in New York and legal circles. Uh, take a listen. Well, I don't think that Michael Cohen comes to Trump's office with some sterling uh, record with a background that uh, uh, would be attractive to me. So I don't know whether he's ever handled litigation for Trump. Do you I, think that Donald Trump made a mistake in putting so much faith in Michael Cohen? Well, that remains to be seen. Seth, does that remain to be seen? Well, I think it does. I mean, look, Michael Cohen holds himself out, not really as a lawyer, but as he claims, you know, takes pride in the fact that when people call him Ray Donovan, that he is uh, President Trump's fixer, that he's out there taking care of problems, whatever it needs to be, taking a bullet for him. And, you know, it's yet to be seen when he faces the full pressure of the U.S. Attorney's Office, as we're talking about now possible bank fraud charges, which have a 30-year criminal penalty, whether he will still stand tall for Mr. Trump, take that bullet for him, or instead of being coming Ray Donovan, turn into Henry Hill and flip and work with Mr. Mueller and, and put the stones to the president in a way that the president would clearly be uncomfortable with. Hank, uh, you know both these men, so you know them individually and you know something of their relationship to each other. Sure. Uh, 
The allegation here in what is a high bar to raid mm -hmm. the lawyer's office for the sitting mm -hmm. president sure. uh, is that there were federal crimes. Do you, do you think that Michael Cohen could have crossed a line there in 2016? Michael Cohen is, uh, and this is not in a partisan vein that I'm saying this, he's a very loyal fellow, he serves his principal well. Um, I'm not competent to judge about whether there were crimes committed or not. If you're saying, will he stand up? He's going to stand up as long as he can, and that's his nature, and that's the nature of their relationship. What is the nature of their relationship? I mean, is it a business relationship or something more? Well, I, Michael Cohn, and I briefly talked about this some years back, um, he has a very strong connection to Mr. Trump. Um, it's one that he doesn't walk away from and one that he's not unproud of. And what do you think it comes from? There are people uh, in this world in New York who say that uh, Michael feels that he went so much farther in life than he, than he thought he would because of one man, Donald Trump. If that's the case, it's very much a New York story. Look, I've worked all over the world, but there's one thing that holds true when you get out of New York. People don't view loyalty in the same way as they do here. It is a quality that people expect and demand and from which you could rise from the lowest point to the highest. How about that, Seth? You're our uh, Washington prosecutor there. Ain't no loyalty in your town. No, no, it's, I think it's the same. I mean, I will tell you, having flipped dozens and dozens of people when I was a federal prosecutor, when those kinds of crimes are put in front of a, a potential defendant or a defendant, where there are 30-year offenses and someone could be joined to jail for the better part of 10 or 12 years, missing their kids' upbringing, you know, being taken away from their family. It's your life. You it's know, your whole life. Yeah, loyalty is good to only a certain extent. I've had mothers flip against daughters, uh, CEOs flip against CFOs. I mean, it, you know, it is a different situation. And when now, I, the hold one on, thing I, Seth, yeah. I would say the mother-daughter link is a little stronger than the CEO-CFO link. <laughs> Well, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. <laughs> it's like, I can't believe my accountant <laughs> wants to go home and see his kids. I can't. Uh, Renato, uh, I, I turn to you, though, and, and go to the point about flipping. Andrew Weissman, who is not a household name, but is one of the key aggressive prosecutors that worked under Mueller in the Enron Task Force, now works for him again in this case, did flip people, did go after family, did go after spouses. It was striking to me that Jay Goldberg, who told me he still speaks to Donald Trump by phone, went right to the Andrew Weissman card. What does that tell you? Well, I will tell you, there is a lot of speculation that uh, Weissman's going to flip uh, Cohen, I, I, I got to tell you, I'm a skeptic. I'll believe it when I see it just because Donald Trump has the pardon power. Uh, and I imagine that Cohen feels pretty confident he's going to get that unless there's a state offense involved that Trump can't, uh, can't, uh, can't pardon. But I do think Trump needs to be concerned about something else, which is that communications between him and Cohen were uh, retrieved in this search warrant. And that means that whatever him and, and Cohen were talking about, potentially about the Access Hollywood tape or something else, was the, is the part of the subject of this federal investigation, and that has to be uh, make Trump and his camp very, very worried. Yeah, and I raised that with a member of Congress uh, this week, Hank, because uh, if you care about these rules in the Constitution, sure. you care about them, uh, whether they help or hurt your, your, the people you happen to like. And there is certainly an issue around the potential violation of anyone's uh, protected rights, let alone the president's. So I think that's a big question hanging over the FBI in New York. I think it's pretty serious. I suspect they're going to feel they need to be pretty careful. When you look at the road ahead as a sure. political whiz, as you are, is this politics as usual and everything Cohen did in 2016? Or does this feel like what happens when people who are used to, as you put it, the New York way, come in and try to apply that in what is a regulated field, which is the pursuit of federal power in America? Anybody can predict what's going to happen here, and can predict politics really needs to have, be hospitalized right away, because it's not clear. What is clear is Michael Cohen, who rose and by your own words, Barry, just a few moments ago, who rose from nothing to be something, is he going to give that up to prosecutors or is he going to walk that line mm -hmm. and say, drop dead, strong letter to follow? His previous behavior has been drop dead, strong letter to follow. There's an argument he made that that's a very personal decision he's going to have to make. What does it mean about our politics? It means that guys who want to stand up may be more reluctant in the future, or maybe it means that people who do that are going to do that even more so. Yeah, or maybe people should run campaigns in a way that doesn't have the FBI probing what you did in October 2016. Absolutely accurate. To get a judge to approve this, again, I don't, I don't presuppose where the case goes, I just report on it. but. I can tell you if a judge approved this, this raid, there's some stuff they found in, that relates to October 2016. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.